Coming up on Digital Music Trends 224 on the 19th of March 2015, a South by Southwest special as I chat with the representatives from Who Sampled, Lyric Find, CD Baby, Rumblefish and Gig Salad about what's going on in Austin, Texas. We also chat about Kendrick Lamar, the Empire soundtrack taking the number one spot on the Billboard 200 thanks to streaming, Rhapsody's Twitter feature and Ardu's new social features as well as YouTube for Artists and the new YouTube cards. This week's show is brought to you by Gramophone, a small device that can turn your traditional sound system into a Wi-Fi music player. The Gramophone relies on your home Wi-Fi rather than on Bluetooth, which allows for higher sound quality. You can send your music to the Gramophone right from the Spotify app. And from that moment, the device will bypass your phone and stream directly from the Spotify servers, which means that your phone won't run out of charge and you'll be able to receive notifications and calls without interrupting your music experience. We thank them for the support of Digital Music Trends. Check out the website on gramophone.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends, uh, the weekly show where we talk about and try to make sense of the latest news in the digital music industry. And this week it's a special South by Southwest episode. I am not by myself if you're watching the video version, but I rounded up a few attendees that were able to Skype in from Austin, Texas and relay their impressions of this year's event. We also chat about the news and there were a few interesting headlines to discuss as well. So I really hope you enjoy it. So it's a real pleasure to be here with uh, James Hamlin from Who Sampled, uh, calling in from Austin, Texas. So hi, James, and thanks for calling me as soon as you woke up. How's it going? <laughs> I'm okay, Andrea. I'm okay. I'm still here. I'm still alive. Excellent. Still that's that's great. And so uh, uh, this uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Who Sampled first. So you guys released the Android version uh, back, uh, it was it September last year. And so what's been going on since then? Yeah, so onwards and upwards, really, for a master and business perspective. Um, we have some announcements in the hopper. One that we help, hope to have out by South by, actually, but that looks like that's going to get rolled back to, to next week, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> so we've got to kind of sit on that one. But, you know, over 300,000 tracks on who sampled now live, and um, continue, things continue to go in the, the right direction. I think we might talk about the Kendrick album later and the number that's done, but. Um, you know, sample music continues to be live and well, and Absolutely. you know, big releases, lots of the big releases queued up for this year with you know, sample based music at their absolute core. So, exciting space, exciting time for us, of course. Absolutely. And so, uh, talking about South, South by Southwest this year, yes. so what's caught your eye? You arrived on Monday, so you've been, you've been there uh, so three full days. Uh, w w what is the, one of the key themes that you think uh, uh, is, is taking over the, the festival when it comes to music, or is there any particular startup that's caught your eyes there? Yeah, I mean, a few things. I mean, it's it's probably been the, certainly the case for a while now, but, you know, it's this is a rap music festival from a music perspective. Right. You know, it's rap has not only taken over, but it continues to, you know, its strength continues to be here across the showcases, but also across the panels as well, which is really interesting from a, you know, as someone that, from a business and a fan's perspective. So, you know, we had several hip-hop luminaries and, and luminaries from the music uh, business from multi-generations doing talks yesterday, some absolutely fascinating pieces. We saw the likes of uh, Hank Shockley, Funkmaster Flex, Young Guru, um, all doing panels right up to Big Sean doing his crown talk with Elliot Wilson as well. So, you know, it's great to see it embraced on the music side, but also the panel side as well. So you can get both sides of that story and, you know, really, really kind of get close to these people and ask them some brilliant questions and, and get their involvement. And, you know, that's really, really good to see, as well as an extremely high standard of panels as well that you'd expect covering more our industry, industry really, lots of things. Saw some great stuff on music discovery. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's great to see that, that discussion progressing a little bit as well. So that's good. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I, I would recommend people to go and check out uh, a post by Elliot Van Buskirk from Spotify uh, around a presentation that Paul Lemire has done yesterday at uh, South by Bed. Apparently it was really good and the post is really good as well. So go and check that out. And in terms of uh, hip-hop acts, uh, you know, uh, there's always been a, a great... Uh, presence of really high profile artists that were called in by brands over the last few years so do you feel like uh, that's also trickling down to the showcases which are traditionally more a uh, guitar uh, band uh, led uh, are there a lot of smaller hip-hop artists at the festival too 
Yeah, I mean, look, the small guys are still here. I mean, I, I was told there's two, 2,300 bands. Right. Uh, there, and look, you know, the small independent artists are still here and it's still a great platform for them. Tonight, there's the Southern Hospitality Showcase, which is, you know, um, showcasing a multitude of um, independent rap artists right up to um, major known artists also and those platforms are still there and people are still out on sixth street hawking their music and that's brilliant <laughs> but you know the brands are here and the brands are here in force and you know maybe maybe not as the same as last year you know there's a, there's a few omissions you know i know doritos are out and there's yet there's no one mega that we know about you know there isn't a kenya west or a jay-z but like you know with the release of the kendrick record on that type of time yeah. you he's gonna be here in theory i think it, it would make sense if he is so no one stratospheric as yet so maybe it's eased off a little bit but yeah. like you know you know amazing quality showcases last night you know we saw the likes of um two chains ot genesis chance the rapper um you nice. know these guys are there that you can see them and you know if you're smart and you get ahead of the queues and you get on the right apps you can even <laughs> of course not necessarily queue to see them so um that hustle continues but absolutely yeah, it and, and it may not be, be a fulfilling place it may not be necessarily a bad thing you know last year there was so so much uh, of the uh, so many of the headlines were taken up by the guy, uh, guys like you know justin timberlake and, and uh, loads of other huge mega stars that were doing yes. showcases uh, and concerts and so uh, perhaps the fact that that they don't you know there's not as many this year it might not be a bad thing for the smaller guys because they might get a little bit more attention look you know it, it's interesting and you hear the argument from both sides but as i say the yeah. it felt a little bit too crowded last year you know itunes festival yeah. of course which is a brilliant thing but it didn't feel like there was the need for that yeah. um it was crowded enough so yeah lots more artists of maybe a, a kind of on the hype you know absolutely on the come up from a hip-hop side like a race the mini goes these types of acts are absolutely everywhere but the mega stars not so much and and that's probably the way it should be maybe we're going to see some tonight come out of the blue you know an hour's notice but that's more of the south bite that we're kind of used to so i think i think they've got the balance just right so far and really looking forward to today are you are you going to the uh, snoop dogg keynote um that's very early on friday morning so <laughs> yeah if my bosses are listening of course yeah I'll, of course I'll be I'll be there. There, we shall see hopefully i mean it's always great value yeah. seeing snoop do absolutely anything but having a keynote at um friday uh 9 a.m is a is, is an interesting choice so yeah. uh yeah hopefully hopefully you never know i think even gaga last year was perhaps on the friday and yeah the room was it was a huge ballroom upstairs at the hilton yes. but it wasn't full to the brim just because uh, i guess it was morning and it was yeah the last we'll, day, we'll so. see i mean i think look <laughs> tonight's the biggest night for music you've got the most amount of showcases the most amount of choice taking place yeah um tonight so so yeah you know maybe maybe people will be going to both and and good luck to them for that yeah and, and uh, um so let's move on to to a little bit of news so uh, uh today we heard that uh, uh kendrick lamar's uh, new album uh which is uh, to pimp a butterfly has uh, uh, track streamed 9.6 million times on monday uh, on the first day of its release which is uh, the highest number recorded for uh, an album streaming a single day uh, on spotify so this is an interesting uh, story w what does that tell you about about you know the role of hip-hop as you said but also of sample music in 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 in, in, in you know in the wider ecosystem and, and does does the success of Kendrick Lamar surprise you? I don't think it's surprising at all I mean I think it tells us a bunch of things right number one and you know we're chatting to some uh, Google folks yesterday they got a house over here I think number one it's telling them, oh, do we all need to go back to releasing music on Mondays again? That's the first thing. And look, he's an artist that he's in a position where he's fighting for that number one spot in rap, and that means a lot. And look, the anticipation has been amazing. The press leading up to it, incredible. And, you know, it was just all set and ready to go. And, you know, the internet on Monday was, sort of, I was traveling most of the day, but it was a wash and it was ready for Kendrick. Well, Kendrick and the Kanye West uh, Glastonbury announcement. And look, yeah. from a Who Sample perspective, look, it's amazing. And our, and our um, top samples charts are dominated by uh, Kendrick Lamar entries. And that's no major surprise. And I recommend if you've heard the album and you want to explore more of it, you go to Who Sample and you check out some of those entries on there. But it's, look, it's his popularity it, it comes as no surprise to any of his fans the types of people he's collaborated with on there the likes of thundercat the likes of Bilal. you know this isn't a record full of club bangers there isn't a club banger on it you know it's a record that i think 
you know, reaches many, many audiences. And look, I think I think he's going to be here this week, and it's it's a, it's a brilliant listen. I haven't had enough time to uh, spend time with it. We've been playing it on a beats pill in, in the room, but it's um, yeah, it's. <laughs> When you see a record like that, and again from a business perspective for us, that you know, sampled and inspirations are, you know, really driving that record, but from very different and um, interesting sources. And you know, it's good to see him um, drawing on those inspirations and making making a great record. And George Clinton's on there as well. Which oh, is great! A brilliant. Thing. That's awesome. And so. And uh, this is interesting because from a, from a US perspective, actually, one of the things that uh, uh, came up this week was the fact that uh, Madonna didn't get to the to, to number one uh, position in the uh, Billboard 200 albums chart uh, because uh, yeah. em the soundtrack for Empire got there uh, first. Uh, uh, the interesting thing is that the difference in... No spoilers on Empire, Andre. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it either. So, yeah, I, I will not do any spoilers. Uh, but the interesting thing here is that um, uh, whilst uh, Madonna uh, did... Uh, arrived second, she actually sold more actual physical records. What really did it for Empire was the fact that they had a, a, a much uh, higher stream rate. So uh, I think Empire uh, did around uh, 20,000 uh, 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 album equivalent uh, uh, sales uh, thanks to uh, the reports of streaming services, uh, whilst Madonna only did about 5,000. So that tells you a lot about the demographic uh, as well of Madonna perhaps skewing a little bit older and people not streaming as, as much her tracks. Also the fact that she doesn't have a, a big hit at the moment. So one of the things that, that was interesting here is obviously next week to see what the impact is of that that's going to have on Kendrick Lamar's position in the charts, although he's probably going to be number one anyway. Uh, and the other thing is also to, to think about the difference with the UK because in the UK the official charts company decided to uh, level out uh, the uh, uh, for the two biggest singles of a track so that the album sort of becomes more consistent and there isn't for example a runaway single that can skew the uh, the track equivalent sales uh, for the charts so in that sense uh, uh, you know do, do, do you feel like in the UK that they made a better choice you know in making it so that there can be the one single that drags the whole album up the charts thanks to streaming or, or do you feel like the, the US had a, had, a, had a better option by essentially taking any single stream and allowing that to contribute towards the chart position? Yeah, it's a great question. And look, but I think what it all boils down to at the end of the day is, is this something that people want to listen to? Right. And I think if it is, you can then build the bedrock of the structure around it. And I think, look, Empire and Madonna are two brilliant examples of you couldn't get something more old and more new right now. I mean, my prediction, and no one listened to me, and it didn't come true anyway, but that, that you know, that the cameo on yesterday's Empire premiere was going to be Kendrick, you know, right. because it's like the Empire cameos, cameos each week continue to gain um, ascendancy, and that's a platform over here in the US. There isn't something of this size, and, you know, what that show has done in terms of not only the experience it's created on screen, but also music. The music's good. The music's catchy. I was having this conversation with, with, with some friends last night um, eating some barbecue. The music's good and, and it's going to go that way. And look, in terms of the way this music's being consumed, unfortunately, Madonna, we've had this way for a while. There's no hype, there's no buzz, and you know what we find the buzz that we do see, you know, it's around something completely different. And I think that you're going to have a completist, the, the people that are going to buy that music and going to buy it physically, and will probably pay any price. Yeah. But whereas you have Empire, which is a, a force of nature, absolute phenomenon, um, especially amongst young people here in America that, that want it and want it now and want to be a part of that movement. Incredible. Absolutely. Well, uh, James, thanks so much for your time, and I'll let you get back to uh, your Southway experience. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Once again, it's whosampled.com. Uh, uh, well, it's a real pleasure to be here with Daryl Ballantyne, the CEO of Lyric Vines. So, hi, Daryl, and thanks for joining me once again from Austin, Texas. We spoke there last year, but here uh, uh, this year we're remote. Remote, unfortunately. How's it going? It's it's going great. I mean, this isn't quite as nice as sitting out on the on the patio with you last year, yeah. but uh, you know. It's all good. It's we'll, all we'll good. We can get, and uh, it's always <laughs> a fun time to be here. Uh, really exciting stuff uh, from you guys uh, uh, this week uh, with the announcement of the opening of a London office. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, we've we've brought on uh, Will Mills as our new chief revenue officer. He he's based in London, so he's opening our our London office to give us more of a, a European presence, and it's enabling us to really uh, interact 
a lot more closely with our current European-based clients uh, and uh, and all the publishers that we work with there as well. So it's great to have somebody there uh, on the ground all the time. And, and he's also uh, helping us with the rest of the international expansion. So he's right now sourcing uh, our representation and what our plans are going to be for Asia and and other regions to have people in those places as well. So it's an exciting point for us. And you know, Will is somebody we've known for a long time. He was our contact at Shazam yeah. for yeah. many, many years. Uh, so we're we're really excited to have him on board. And uh, we've kind of we've got him down here in at South by as uh, you know, throwing him straight into the fire and as uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Only a few weeks on, onto the job. But, oh, he can uh, handle South by, I'm sure. And. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you also, you know, it must have been cool to see, because you guys provide the lyrics to Shazam right now, right? So it must have been cool to actually also see that come into, into play in the announcement where they actually display yeah. the lyric coming up. Yeah, that was that was really cool to so see. I'm, I'm talking yeah. about the was... iWatch announcement just for the listeners because I haven't specified it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it's such a nice looking implementation and, and having it up there with, with you know, Tim Cook pointing to it and being able to say, "Hey, yes, that's that's our stuff." And Shazam has done a great job of uh, of, of building the interface for uh, the Apple Watch. So it was definitely really cool. And and with Will too, who he was looking at it and saying, "Well, it's my old job and my new job just <laughs> exactly. together being presented by Tim Cook." So. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. And so, for, for how do you see that the the market shape up for the next couple of years, given the uh, increase? in the number of services and also the number of services that want to have extra info uh, like lyrics, for example? Well, I think you know, overall with, with services, they're just going to continue to grow, but we're going to see some consolidation uh, over the next few years. Uh, it, it it just is logical that there will be less uh, services available um, then, and there'll be some acquisitions in that. But you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, of movement now with lyrics in particular on, on services and we've, uh, we've we've integrated with with Deezer recently yeah. and that's spurring a lot of uh, of movement as well and with with Amazon and YouTube Music Key and and others so there's definitely uh, a lot of uh, of urgency now for services to implement lyrics and and keep pace uh, yeah. and users love it so it's definitely the next the next year or two are going to be very very interesting for us uh, with service implementations uh, and global implementations as well with yeah. all the different language content and synchronization on that. so it's it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be uh, great to watch and be a part of. Yeah, and you guys also have worked really hard in the last ten years on on the internationalization as well of the of the uh, yeah. licensing side of things, especially in South America, and, and but also a bunch of other territories. And so I guess that plays well into these areas integration because they are also the service that is most present internationally. Exactly, that was a really key part for Deezer was being able to roll it out uh, globally as much as possible, and we continue to. Uh, to push for more licensing and more content around the world, and you know, I will be the first to admit that we're still only scratching the surface. And we've we've done licenses with over four thousand publishers, and uh, and we're in countries all over the world. But there's a lot more to do. It seems like it's a it's a never ending task of uh, acquiring rights and acquiring content yeah. and uh, and synchronizing all of the content. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a long haul, but it's definitely been very exciting to do all of the international work and work with societies and publishers and services around the globe. Absolutely. And so uh, talking about South by Southwest, uh, you've been there, you know, three days, three full days now, I think, uh, you know, w what was your first takeaways? Is there anything that you've seen in terms of panels or discussions or startups that has, has caught your eyes so far? You know, not not a lot to be honest, because I've mostly just spent all my days in meetings, uh, <laughs> and I haven't uh, I haven't made it to any of the the panels. Um, my panel is tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll make it to that one. Uh, <laughs> and you know, I've been talking to lots of people, but it's a lot of the the same people yeah. uh, that have been around for a while. So I haven't seen much that has really been an, a new cool thing uh it, it's been a lot of the same stuff yeah, yeah uh, exactly i've uh, seen some some good bands in the evening yeah. uh, but uh but not a lot that has been you know from the the technology side 
uh, really Impressive. new and, and compelling. Yeah, and interesting also to see that, uh, I guess, as far as I understood anyway, uh, the two biggest presences uh, at the festival in terms of services were possibly uh, SoundCloud and Spotify. And, and, and so interesting to see also how they have played uh, the South by card in, in a really big way. Yeah, yeah, they they've been here a lot, and uh, and Pandora has a huge setup as well. Right, they've got you know bands playing all day and all night for three or four straight days, uh, and in a in a giant venue on six. So nice. They they've really done it well, and, and interestingly enough, StubHub has a, has a big presence here, and and they've been throwing right. some really popular parties that they got shut down by the fire marshal the other night. So uh, it's it's been it's a sign uh, of a good party. A place to be. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But oh, yeah, it makes sense, I guess. services it's now are are definitely pushing hard on the crowd at, at South by to get uh, to get that level of adoption and, and awareness and yeah. get it into more mainstream. I think a lot of uh, a lot of the services weren't necessarily uh, totally mainstream over the past few years, and they're really hitting that tipping point now. I think so. Yeah. Uh, they're Absolutely. pushing to everybody. And one of the one of the key points on, on, on terms of uh, uh, streaming services is visibility. So uh, just to incorporate a little bit of the newscast uh, from this week. Uh, uh, we've seen a couple of interesting announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, Rhapsody has announced that uh, US users will be able to share tracks on Twitter. Uh, that will appear on, on the feed normally. But uh, the, the 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 interesting portion is that anybody that uh, is on Twitter will be able to play the entirety of those tracks. So I don't know how the licensing deals obviously are structured but they've they managed to make it work so that uh, anybody that shares a track from a, a Rhapsody account uh, into Twitter uh, will, uh, you know, uh, that track would be playable for anybody that is on the service. Uh, and also, uh, Ardio has, has announced a few a few new things on the social side uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, allowing uh, uh, better discovery uh, uh, um, and uh, better social features uh, within the service, as well as uh, uh, some more curation uh, channels uh, led by uh, labels. And so, I guess bo we've seen both services sort of uh, juggle to gain more visibility. Do you think uh, uh, that is sort of the prime concern for streaming services right now to make sure that they manage to uh, sort of uh, uh, get a look in and, and get people checking them out and seeing what the features are? Yeah, I think it's, it's all about about growth and, and grabbing users right now. With, with so many services, it's, we're still sort of in that land grab phase. I think what Rhapsody's doing with, with the, the Twitter streaming is, is really, really cool. And hopefully that will have a great viral effect for them that yeah. people will see it. I haven't seen the specific implementation what it would look like if you are are outside of uh, the U.S. or how? That, so there's some questions for me around yeah, that. Absolutely, but, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. For me in Canada, if somebody tweets <laughs> something about with Rhapsody, what do I what do I actually see? Yeah. But within it within the U.S., the the viral prospects of that I think are, are great. That people will be able to share a full full stream, and everybody can listen to it, and then. They're, then they're going to get the rhapsody pitch of of coming in and doing it. Yeah, uh, RDO has has always been sort of the the front runner for social integration. Yeah, uh, and they've done lots of stuff over over the years, so it's not surprising to see them continue to push that angle and. Uh, and try new things. Yeah, absolutely. And also the Catch-22, obviously, for as far as Rhapsody is concerned, I was saying that uh, obviously you need to know people that are subscribed to Rhapsody in order for them to share tracks that you can actually see. Oh. Uh, the only other way around it is for somebody to actually actively search for Rhapsody links that are shared on Twitter in order to be able to play the track, on, the track in full. So, uh, so yeah, d definitely a Catch-22 there when it comes to actually uh, seeing those those tweets that, that are coming up. And, and also interesting to see that uh, this year uh, Apple didn't have much of a presence so the festival after last year's uh, uh, iTunes festival extravaganza that wasn't repeated yeah. this year. Obviously, it wasn't as successful as, as they were hoping, or, or you know, they changed the strategy. And and that's just uh, a, a week, so just a couple of months away from them uh, releasing the uh, the uh, uh, much reported on uh, streaming service. So uh, I guess uh, maybe next year we might see a bit more of Apple, right? Yeah, I, w I would think so. That if they're if they do end up launching the streaming service, uh, that they'll have a much bigger a bigger setup next year to try to push it out to everybody. But then again, it's Apple, right? I mean, they right. they always kind of do their own thing and and avoid uh, big festivals a lot. They don't sure. they don't do anything for CES or they don't do anything for uh, for other like conferences uh, that uh, that we all go to. So 
it, you never know. They might just do their own thing uh, some other time and ignore South by completely. Yeah. Uh, but you'd think with with the mass of of consumers that are here that they would would try to take advantage of that once once they have the the new product released exactly yeah. and also interesting to to note that you know last year it was a totally a surprise for everybody and i think we commented on it quite a lot uh, when the announcement was made about the uh, itunes festival south by because it was out of character for the company and so i guess uh, yeah. the fact that they are not there is probably more in character with the company's usual attitude than the fact yeah. that then that, it's too bad there were, were there were some great shows last year <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely but also like they were kind of weird because uh, like I, I kind of i turned up and, and it did, didn't seem to have the same atmosphere of some of the gigs that were happening at South by at the same time just because, oh, just because it, in in the Moody Theater it's gigantic it's yeah. you know, it, it's it's like going to a stadium concert uh, and you know a lot of South by is about those small venues uh, yeah and with you know, you're you're in kind of a dingy bar and that like one of the, one of the things that I love about South by is coming here and seeing Canadian bands uh, that back home would sell out gigantic venues and here uh, I can come and see them and there'll be like 10 people in the bar and it's amazing <laughs> and you just get that much much more closer and cool experience uh, so it's, it's funny to come here and, to, and then go and see bands from from Toronto or other places that but uh, yeah. it's it really is that that intimate vibe that's really cool yeah, and also you know even bigger venues like Stubbs, for example, are still uh, still have a very cool feel about it if, if they are uh, much yeah, bigger than some of the Yeah, you're standing on dirt. Yeah, the whole time, yeah. right. You're you're in a field with a giant stage uh, in, in front of you, so it doesn't it, get it much more taxes than that. Like a, uh, sort of a professional venue yeah. even though it, it very much is yeah absolutely well uh, Daryl it was a pleasure having you on today and uh, once again go and check out Lyric Find uh, for all their services uh, on, on Lyric's point of view uh, uh, also if you are a developer they, do, they have a lot of uh, interesting things that you can play around with so uh, go and check that out uh, Daryl thanks so much for your time and uh, have a, a great rest of the show I hope I hope it, uh, you, you survive the next uh, 48 hours and get home safe <laughs> Me too. Thanks a lot. It's a real pleasure to be here with Kevin Bruner, the VP of Marketing at CD Baby. So hi, Kevin, and thanks for joining me today. It's uh, still uh, morning there in Austin. How's it going? It's going well. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's it's 11.30 a.m. here in Austin, which means... Uh it's still very early. It's still very early, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's not, yeah, the, it feels later here because the time difference is not as much uh, until uh, for the next couple of weeks still until we change our time. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it, 11.30 is, is an okay time. I've had a, somebody come on at 8.30 a.m. Austin time, <laughs> which uh, must have been That's tough, rough. must have been very tough. Yeah. And, and so as far as this year's South by Southwest, uh, uh, we've seen uh, a lot of uh, uh, movement uh, uh, around you know discovery curation some of the topics that sort of have been popping up on my feed anyway uh, you know uh, Spotify gave an interesting presentation uh, there's been a lot of good discussions on every topic as usual uh, anything that kind of uh, sticking out uh, for you as far as the sort of points of concern or or uh, points that people are bringing up in conversation I think there's been a lot of interest around uh, the new revenue streams opening up I was on a panel about uh, micro sync and, and YouTube monetization for artists and there's been a lot of various panels having to do with uh, how to collect streaming royalties um, you know with our partner song trust was on that but there's a lot of panels around that nature of uh, tapping into new revenue streams um, there's been I've noticed a lot of discussion, like you mentioned as well, about curation and discovery. It seemed like a lot of the the discussions fell in in sort of those two camps. Yeah, interesting also because uh, I think three years ago, I think it, uh, I I was on the first panel I've been at on South by at South by on curation, uh, and so <laughs> we come a long way since then. But it seems like yeah. the conversations are still uh, sort of circling around that. Although obviously this year we're talking a lot more about human curation than our yeah. algorithmic curation that that we, we we used to talk about a few years ago. 
and and so uh, let's talk about YouTube a little bit a, a little bit more. So uh, they've uh, uh, they're trying to make uh, to take as many steps as possible to get artists involved. Uh, we've seen that this week they launched the uh, YouTube for Artists page, and uh, uh-huh. uh, you know in an attempt to make sure that artists know what they're doing on YouTube and maximize the opportunities on the service. And they've also introduced the new interactive cards that finally uh, bring us uh, uh, cards on uh, access on mobile, uh, given that mobile is a huge point of entry for uh, especially uh-huh. uh, the younger generation on YouTube. The fact that artists are going to be able to make those cards work on mobile devices is, yeah. I guess, is a huge thing. Uh, also, from, from, from the alternative monetization point of view in terms of selling merchandise and, 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 and tickets, right? Yeah, I, I think you know every step that they're taking, especially to make it more mobile friendly, is is uh, uh, definitely a step in the right direction. And you know the the, the launch of the artist site is just you know it, a lot of it is the information that's already been out there with the 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 creator playbooks they used to have. A lot of it's just updating that and making it more accessible for artists but it really does point to the fact that you know their their success or at least the success of artists on YouTube uh, that when you use it as a platform and not just a place to park your videos it opens up more opportunities for you so I mean that's that's one thing at CD Baby you know with our YouTube monetization program we've been uh, putting a lot of effort into helping to educate artists as well because uh, you know if you just upload some videos and you get you have you know some fans checking them out that that uh, might get you, you know, some traffic and some exposure and some revenue from YouTube. But if you really dive into it as a platform, it, it makes a huge difference into uh, what could open up for you. And so I think YouTube is just, you know, they've recognized that and they just want to make sure that artists understand that as well. Yeah, and that's also interesting for, from the point of view of you guys because uh, uh, you don't actually manage the... Uh, you wouldn't upload the YouTube's for the artists, uh, whilst you would distribute uh, pretty much everything else for them. And so that's that's yeah. I guess where there's a lot of education required because you, it's out of your hands if they don't tag it properly. If the metadata is is is, is rubbish, and, and that uh, does affect the amount of money that the artists can make. Yeah, especially things like the metadata, like you mentioned. I mean, it's 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 common for artists to upload a video that says. Uh, concert or live show, but right. it doesn't have any information about where the show was, when it happened, who was on the bill, you know, what city it was in, and so all those things of uh, that adding that information makes uh, your video so much more uh, the possibility of it being found and discovered, and and people searching for various things, and so that's one of the key things that that artists typically don't do. That I know at uh, YouTube tries to spend a lot of time educating artists with and so and so do we because it's it makes a big difference yeah yeah, absolutely. And uh, also, like one of the things that we've been talking about quite a lot on the show in the last few weeks, given Amanda Palmer's uh, campaign, has been uh, Patreon. And uh, this week, Patreon uh, uh, announced the acquisition of uh, or the, the merger with a Subbable, which is another sort of Patreon-like platform that actually launched before them, but has uh, uh, gained a lot less traction uh, than Patreon has. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and now Patreon uh, is is, pull, is distributing over two million dollars a month uh, to uh, to uh, 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 artists and, and creators that are. Uh, on the platform, uh, but we're also seeing a lot of companies that 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 are sort of looking at this potential opportunity, but also uh, realizing that music is a very different field, uh, and and that the Patreon-like model might not work for a lot of artists. So, what are your thoughts on that? And and have people been talking about Patreon at South by? Uh, I haven't actually heard much uh, chatter about Patreon here. You know, the thing is, I, I think you're right. For for some artists, for a lot of artists, Patreon is is not the solution. I think uh, it's it's for a specific type of artist with uh, fans that that want to you know support serial content. And if you're not good at carrying out an ongoing conversation with your fans like that it's it's there's other platforms that would make more sense for you to use actually i think patreon uh is is going to find its home um, maybe potentially elsewhere where the community i see really gravitating towards it is the podcast community yeah. where that makes a lot of sense where you're trying to make these podcasts you build up these fans and they're willing to pay uh for each episode and some of the podcasts that i listen to have adopted that and seen a lot of success 
And to me, I, I could see Patreon becoming more of a platform for that than for artists who, you know, there are a lot of artists these days releasing serial content, and that's how they, they go about creating their art. But for the, the community at large, it's still a lot of times not uh, something that they engage with their fans in that way yeah yeah absolutely uh great well uh you know apart from that uh, uh on the music front uh, anything that's uh, co that that you've seen or heard was great uh, and and are you excited about anything that's coming up in the next couple of days uh as far as shows yeah. um let's see uh i i just kind of bounced around last night with uh some some friends and uh ended up at a heavy metal show until like great. two in the morning <laughs> nice I'm a supporter Which of heavy metal. So. I, I don't think I'd been at, a, at a, that kind of. I don't think I've been at that kind of metal show since college. So that was <laughs> that was uh, that was kind of fun. And you um, found a needle yeah, in so, the haystack so, as well because uh, there aren't a lot of metal shows at South by at least that I, I recall. There's only a couple of venues that really put any of those bands on. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And uh, I was over at the NPR show last night at Stubbs for a bit, and there were some good bands playing there, and so yeah, I mean it, it, it's it. it um, it seems like uh, I don't know that there there hasn't been as many big names on the bills yeah. like they have in years past, but uh, there's still lots of great music, and we have our CD Baby showcase coming up Friday, so that oh, that's great. gonna it's it's a uh, probably the best lineup we've had yet so it's it's going to be a good one that's great and when we talk, touched uh, upon the the fact of that of, of you know fewer big names uh, with a couple of other guests and, and it's interesting you know last year we had the likes of you know prince and the patch mode and lady gaga and we had all these huge legendary sort of artists uh, come and play and this year there, there isn't uh, quite as many as much of that and that's probably actually a good thing because uh, i guess uh, some of the conversations that we had after south by last year re revolved around the fact that some of the big names were sort of taking a bit of a the spotlight out of uh, the this smaller bands which should be the focus of South by and a lot of the industry people that were supposed to go and see the smaller bands maybe ended up uh, going to the the shows of Prince or of Lady Gaga and actually missing out on yeah. some of the small acts yeah I, I was talking to somebody last night and uh, you know the iTunes festival didn't happen this year they did that last year and um, and and there was a lot more th things like that going on um, and this year it, it's just not the case so yeah yeah exactly and uh, and uh, uh we, we still seen sp uh, brand sponsored things but uh, i guess not not yes. as much have you seen the the mcdonald's fan around and and how's that been going i've i i've walked by the mcdonald's stage the infamous mcdonald's stage <laughs> <laughs> and uh honestly i it was i haven't gone in it's just a big tent um and uh i think you can get big macs there um and Obviously. they've got a stage and it looks like a nice setup um you know, now that they're 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 paying artists, it's it's probably a good thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's just uh, it it feels sort of like with with some of those brands, like a, a bit of a transition year. Because like you know, the last couple of years there was that giant Dorito stage that looked like a four story tall vending machine. Yeah, it, it seems to be less of that kind of stuff this year, which which I think could be a good thing. Uh, you Absolutely, know, a, yeah. a lot more people going to the smaller clubs. Yeah, no, that's that's exciting to hear, and uh, it feels like the the brand takeover that uh, seemed uh, entirely inevitable last year that to continue and, and get bigger has perhaps scaled down a little bit, and and that's it's interesting actually because you know the the U.S. economy has has bounced back, and so uh, it's not like we have any issues around. Uh, brands not having money is just the way that they decide to uh, spend it and, and that might have changed a little bit over the last uh, uh, year year and a half uh, uh, and the way they, they manage their budgets uh, well uh, Kevin thanks so much for your time uh, uh, from Austin and uh, uh, you know obviously uh, people should go and check out CD Baby uh, if they're looking for a distribution or uh, just to uh, listen to some good music uh, on the site and uh, 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 your handle on Twitter is um, at <clears throat> excuse me at K Bruner the letter K and then my last name B R E U N E R so, perfect yeah awesome I'm on Twitter and Instagram posting photos from Austin so yeah and uh, and obviously oh last thing have you seen my, my, uh, many people meerkatting around uh, I've seen a few feeds crop up but uh, the quality is really good I haven't I've I've heard uh, you know people mention it I, I saw a lot of chatter on it about it before during interactive 
Um, but then when I got down here, I, I talked to a couple people that have downloaded it, but I, I haven't seen anybody using it. So. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll it's see. it's interesting actually. There, there, that, there don't seem to be that many people broadcasting at any given time. Uh, so I'm wondering yeah. whether that's because they are curating the feed or because actually there aren't that many people broadcasting at any given time. Uh, so given that, I would I would, I would <laughs> say the the latter. Probably, maybe both. But uh, I. I it, it seemed like one of those things that was a big buzz at Interactive, but as far as actual users, they're probably not there yet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like right now, I've just opened it up, and there's three. There are three streams going on. Uh, I just don't know whether that's just limited to the people that I might follow. or I don't think so. I think that should be everything that's that's on uh, Meerkat at the moment. And yeah. so given that it's a breakthrough app of South by Southwest, it doesn't feel like it's a lot. But the quality is great. And so uh, we'll see how that develops over the next few few months. So who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll Meerkat the show at some point. I just need to hook it up to the, my mixing desk yeah. and uh, set, up, uh, set up the iPhone. And that should work. Well, uh, Kevin, again, thanks so much. It's a real pleasure to be here uh, with uh, Paul Anthony, the CEO of uh, Rumblefish in this uh, South by Southwest uh, uh, on the fly uh, uh, reports that, that I'm doing this week. And so, uh, Paul, thanks for joining me on the show. How's it going? Hey, happy to be here. It's going really well. It's great to have you. And so uh, thanks for taking the time and you're on your uh, Wednesday morning to talk uh, to DMT uh, at, uh, from Austin. And first of all, uh, you guys at Rumblefish had a, 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 an interesting piece of news uh, uh, come up uh, this week. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so yesterday we launched uh, what we're calling the RAD key. And it's a rights administration database key. So in short, what it does is it helps you communicate to YouTube that you have rights for a song that you put in a video. So for video creators, it's it's uh, uh, going to become an essential tool for them. They all want to use great music. They all want to um, either block ads if they don't want ads or uh, monetize videos. And this makes it really easy to do that. Prior, there's no way to, to tell YouTube what rights that you have. And this is as easy as you know, like a barcode for music licensing. And so, and so in terms of like, uh, w w what kind of services would that would that apply to? And within within your own ecosystem, how how do you see that actually working in in a day to day? Yeah, our launch partner for the Rad Keys is uh, Shutterstock, and Shutterstock is oh, great. A, a massive um, uh, online marketplace. We license images, video footage, and and now music with us. Um, we power that experience in partnership with Shutterstock, and they have uh, a million a million customers coming there every day licensing work. So it was a great place for us to uh, feature and launch the key. And so whenever you're done editing your video, um, if you want to monetize your video or block ads, um, since you paid for a license, uh, you get to use the keys. So. Fantastic. And so, uh, talking about uh, CZAC and sort of the acquisition, uh, how how did the, you know that, that's a development that that's new since we last spoke on the show? And so, how is that going? And, and how has that changed anything in the day to day of of what's going on at Rumblefish right now? Yeah, it's been fantastic. Uh, they have been a great partner. CSAC is uh, very, the most forward thinking society out there, um, and and as as you know, uh, they're an unregulated um, society. And they take full advantage of that. They they believe in you know fair market pricing, and uh, they are leveraging us to bring some advanced technological ends to uh, a new side of licensing and, and expand out of performance. So they've been uh, great partners, great mentors, and uh, well, we raised a round of funding with the acquisition. So we've been able to hire more people, and and accelerate our plans. So we're, we're very Absolutely. happy. That's great. And so, uh, talking about what's going on at South by Southwest, uh, obviously uh, uh, a huge amount of startups and, and subjects and, and, uh, and uh, discussions going on over there. Uh, what's caught your eye over the last couple of days? Yeah, the most impressive music startup that, that we've bumped into, we think, is uh, Songspace. Songspace is, uh, they're based in Nashville, <clears throat> and they're gaining a lot of traction in uh, the music publisher and uh, songwriter world. And and what they do, and, and you know, obviously they 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 could explain it better than I could. But what they do is is help songwriters organize their music, right. and uh, it's it's a great platform for songwriters and publishers to essentially um, you know uh, capture music as they're writing it and keep it in an organized fashion instead of just having a million Dropbox folders and different permissions for. You know, different you know publishers or producers or yeah. whatever. So it's it's a pretty clever tool, and and I think they'll probably do well. 
That's great, and that's yes. certainly something that's going to be handy for uh, also artists that license music uh, uh, to Rumblefish uh, uh, as well, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. The last question was around so streaming services. So we heard a lot of talk uh, from the likes of, uh, of Rhapsody and, uh, and Ardia. They've come up with the new social features, but uh, obviously there's a, there's a lot of concern in the US industry around the shift to streaming. Have you heard anything around that in the last couple of days and what the general feeling uh, in regards to uh, streaming services, uh, uh, both uh, the ones that already exist and the ones that are coming up in the next few months? Yeah, the only chatter that we've heard has really been more of the same of what you would expect, which is, um, you know, the labels feel labels and artists feel as if they're being undercompensated, and the streaming services feel like they couldn't possibly pay any more and and have a viable business. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, you know, how I mean, just look at Pandora and 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 their struggle with profitability, uh, yet they have a very uh, successful service. So if if you know, do you do you raise the rates so that you put the Pandoras out of business? Um, because I think that's kind of a short-sighted, short-sighted view. But honestly, uh, we focus on uh, licensing music in, in a different area to create, um, you know, a secondary or tertiary revenue stream for for artists and labels. Absolutely. And uh, Absolutely. there's there's not a lot of um, there's there's not a lot uh, for Rumblefish in that in that realm, but it's interesting to watch it develop because clearly we're moving towards a um, you know a, a larger percentage of the market share being streaming on demand services. Yeah, absolutely. But but the market that you're in is still uh, really growing uh, fast, especially as uh, more and more video creators and services are looking for music uh, that is properly licensed. So uh, definitely an interesting area to be in as well. Well, Paul, thanks so much for your time today and uh, good luck with the rest of the uh, conference. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. It's a real pleasure to be here with uh, Mark Steiner from Gig Salad from uh, Austin, Texas. And uh, we have a few people this week reporting for us from South by Southwest and letting us know what's going on at the conference since I can't be there. And so, Mark, thanks so much for joining me. How's it going? It's my pleasure and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks it's for, great to have thanks you. And for thanks the opportunity. So, thanks for joining us so early in the morning for you guys. And uh, uh, first of all, let's start uh, with uh, a little piece about Gig Salad itself because uh, I haven't covered you guys uh, uh, too much yet. So uh, let us know a little bit about uh, what the company does. Uh, we are a marketplace for entertainers and performers primarily and other event service providers to get gigs. We event planners have been using our site for about 10 years. Simply entertainers and performers and the service providers create a promo kit on our site, a place to um, shop their wares. Yep. Um, and event planners have been coming to us uh, pr mostly from our, our great SEO, but we're, we're fast becoming a destination by doing things like South by Southwest and getting ourselves out there at conventions and traveling the country and our vehicles and spreading the word yeah so you were talking about the fact that last year was really great for you guys and so uh, uh how's the impression of this year compared to last year how how does it feel in austin uh, you know i i don't know entirely why but it seems that there's a it's a little um calmer this year there's a little less um energy i think uh, which isn't a bad thing last year you know we got <laughs> kind of got um it was like drinking water from the fire hydrant. We, it was we, from the moment we showed up. Uh, I, I'm not sure how it happened, but we we had some we we had great T-shirts, and it seemed like everybody knew it, and we were g giving those away with their social engagement. So um, we had you know what it seemed like five, ten people deep all day, every day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And this year, I'm not. It, I'm not sure if there's less people here or what it is. Uh, people still love our T-shirts. They have a lot of people showing up, uh, but it seems like we have a little bit more time with each person to talk about the brand and what we do and find out a little bit about what they, the people, or they themselves do, and see if there's a connection. So I, I would say yeah. it's been um, it, it's been different, but it's been as good. 
Absolutely. And it's kind of interesting you say that because uh, uh, it feels like everybody I know has gone to South by, but I've also read a few articles that talk about the fact that it feels like there's a few less people there this year than last year. Uh, so talking about the show floor, you spent a lot of time there, obviously, with Gig Salad uh, as well. Uh, uh, you know, how's the energy down there? Are there a lot of startups? Uh, I heard some complaints about the apps taking over, but, uh, but uh, what's the feel around there? Oh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, for me, I, when I go around and walk the floor, and I have not seen everything yet, I, um, you know, I, I, I'm looking for something very particular. I'm, you know, I come from an entertainment background, so for me, I'm looking for either other music, you know, directly related to entertainment. Yeah. That's what I do, yeah, absolutely. And then, <laughs> you know, something that I think could possibly enhance enhance gig salad from a technology side yeah and maybe one or what maybe one or two things so far and i've been through half of half of half the trade show i'm going to try to hit up the other half today yeah uh, looking at uh, some of the things that have been going on in terms of uh, talks that uh, you you uh, you're saying that you want to a, a particularly inspirational one uh, this week as well uh, eric eric reese it was uh the lean startup Fantastic, you know what he—he he was not, not not only has he written an amazing book, but he's a really eloquent speaker. And Greenwald from the Wall Street Journal is who interviewed him, and um, I, you know it it was it was good for me to be there. I I as a I hadn't read the book. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, yeah, embarrassing. Yeah. I will. Uh, and out of interest, like, it, it was there any like, did they address at all the the idea? You know, uh, we've been ringing a lot about in the last few days about the fact that uh, there's a little bit of uh, you know people are also starting to warn you know the the ecosystem about uh, the idea of an oversaturation and the fact that there might be uh, a, a bit of a bubble going on in in in, in uh, um, uh, the tax base uh, right now when it comes to uh, funding startups. Uh, was that addressed at all in the talk? And what what was the opinion was, about it? It was not. I, I've heard I've heard a little. Uh, you know, ripple of that going on. That sort of thing doesn't affect me. I, I, I don't. I don't think too much about it. Perhaps it's because the last big bubble we weren't we weren't in existence then. So maybe I should be more concerned. But I can tell you that economically, during you know recessions and downtimes over the past ten years, we not only did you know got through them, but we. Came through glowingly. We yeah. did. We've done really, really well. And, and so, talking about the uh, music portion, you know, to today it's sort of the uh, crossover day, I guess. Usually, the Tuesday where uh, there's some of the music tech-related panels, uh, and, and then music kicks off properly, uh, sort of tomorrow. And uh, w w what are you looking forward to on the music portion of the event? Is there anything in particular that you're excited about? I'm excited about our meetup. Uh, you know, we're the. F um, we're the first event planners meetup that's been we're co-sponsored or supported by South by Southwest, and we that'll be tomorrow evening, at five o'clock, and um, so we get one more two and today and tomorrow trade show time, and then yeah. we get to host this great party, and um, nice. I get to meet a lot of people and introduce them to Gig Salad, those who don't already know about us. That's that's probably my most exciting. The thing I'm looking forward to, and then and then I get to relax a little bit and go and participate in events and go and listen to music. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's definitely it, that, that transition day Wednesday. It's 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 a big one. I love the energy. I love seeing the musicians coming into town, and um, so I'm looking forward to that. I, I I think it'll be primarily tomorrow where we'll see more bands and yeah, sure. Uh, the talent coming through. Although the McDonald's thing has been going on for the last couple of days, I believe. I've heard people talk about the fact that they've seen the McDonald's van or something and the bands go around, but I don't know how evident that was. Well, uh, I can tell you, we were, we were trying to get into a comedy show last night and walking up and down 6th Street and there was a, there was a Ronald McDonald doing a parody. Right. And ripping them down. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen a lot. I, I've not, I've, I've heard a little bit about what was going on. I, I, I was able to talk to somebody yesterday who had a little bit of insight into this whole thing. And, um, I don't know. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's one of those it's, things. It's, it's tough. I, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, you, you, trying, trying to figure out who your demographic is and change with generations and, and make sure, you know, 
try to stay relevant, whether your food or your music or your digital or what, you know, I, they be, they they better do something. Yeah, it's not easy for any brand in that position to actually That's uh, right. be able to turn it around. Uh, well, uh, uh, Mark, it was a pleasure having you. And once again, I would encourage people to go and check out gigsalad.com if you haven't heard of the company yet, uh, uh, especially if you're outside of the US. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I'll go and have a look at what they're doing. Uh, thanks, Mark, for uh, uh, taking the time at uh, South by Southwest. Andrea, thanks for the opportunity.